See how a consultant uses the simple object designer to build a customer solution. Hey, I'm Eric, and um, it's always a big honor to actually witness people using your software. And uh, for me, it's no different. And what I'm, I'm going to show here in this video is Kristen Hosman uh, from Mount Evans Consulting. Uh, showcasing a solution she built for a customer using the Simple Object Designer. So um, let's roll the tape. Take it away, Kristen. What we're going to talk about today is a Simple Object Designer tool, some requirements my client had, and how I was able to accomplish it using his tool. I'm not a developer by any means, but I'm telling you this tool couldn't be more easy to use. You just have to know what some of the logic is. Okay, so let's get started. First off, I needed to document out my client requirements. So high level, here are the client requirements. They wanted to add a custom table to the vendor card that had customer account number, global dimension one, global dimension two. They wanted that custom, they wanted to add a custom field to the purchase header that looked at that custom table that we just set up on the vendor card and, and kind of do some lookups and maybe some flow fields as well. And then we needed to add that custom uh, field to the vendor ledger entries table as well. And the, the kind of the backstory here is that I have a customer, a client that has 28 different companies and they're all running it within one BC company. So we're using global one and global two to dictate what store number and what state these these entities are operating in and since they're all in one business central and company uh, they're just using one vendor and that vendor could be used by multiple entities and each entity has a different account number with that vendor so this is a solution that we came up with and I thought it'd be interesting just to share it with you guys all right so let me go ahead and end this uh, slideshow and we're going to jump into Business Central. So you can see I'm in a sandbox environment to download Simple Object Designer. I just went out to the marketplace and I grabbed it. There's a free trial out there. Go ahead and, and play around with that. But where I started was a new feature. I knew that I needed a new table and that was kind of like the building block. That was the first thing that I needed to do. So I came into to features. I clicked on action. I said new feature. In this scenario, I did a data related table and then I just kind of walked through the wizard. And what we ended up with was this. We ended up with a feature card for our account number. I did use a field for the primary key method. I made that uh, to be our account number in this example. And then I made that a text field because this is gonna be a field that the users can just populate whenever they have a new account number. But here's where the magic happens. So each unique account number is tied to a unique store number or entity type thing, right? So I wanted those also to be included. So because I have a lookup right here for the type, I needed to go into field settings and do a little bit more in here to kind of get that part working. So in this scenario, I looked up the dimension value table 349 and I said that I want to filter it by the store dimension code. Okay, so in this scenario, this is global dimension one. It's only looking at the store uh, dimension values. So then it'll filter that list. And then for the state, very similar. The only difference here is that I said state for the filter instead of store. Okay. So once that was done, I published it. And this is what it, this is ultimately what it built, okay? So we'll use NCR Corporation, for example, and I'm just gonna go to related, our account number. And here you can see that we have five values or five records listed. And these records have different um, store number, state combinations. And so this is it, check. That, that requirement has been fulfilled. 
okay? The other thing that I just wanna make a note here is that you see over on the fact box over here, it is added to the fact box as well. And I didn't really touch on that, but that is actually added in the feature window as well. You can just toggle on fact box and it'll show the records over there as well. So I turned that on, really not a requirement per se for this client, but it's one of those nice to have so that they don't have to go and click into that custom table and see what the records are. So the next requirement was to have those fields flow to the purchase header for like a purchase invoice, right? So the next thing I did was create a new field on a table and I started with the purchase header first. So I clicked new, I, I selected table 38, I placed it on the pages so for the purchase invoice and the credit memo, I did add after. And in this scenario, I just wanted it to show after the invoice number and um, after the credit memo number on both of these tables. Okay. I also went into field uh, settings here as well. I knew that I needed to look up the new table. So 50 to 20 in this example, and I knew that I needed a filter. So in this example, I filtered by the new table vendor number and I filtered by the, the table that I'm in, which is the, the purchase invoice. Uh, I did the relationship to the buy from vendor. So even though it says filters, I think the best way that I can explain it is that this is where the relationship between the two tables come into play. I then did the lookup field transfers and I said, hey, I want shortcut dimension one and shortcut dimension two to automatically populate based on the records in that new table that I just created. So this is what that looks like. I did a couple extra things too. One of the other requirements was that they wanted it added to the vendor ledger. So the next step to get it on the vendor ledger was to do a field transfer from the purchase header. So I went into field transfers and I activated the general journal line and I activated the purchase invoice header and purchase credit memo header. The purchase invoice header and credit memo header, that's gonna be your posted invoice and your posted credit memo. So I wanted to make sure that that field that was on the purchase invoice would be flowing over, okay? I also needed to do it to the general journal line to get it to go to the vendor ledger. Uh, that's kind of like the, the first stop that it needs to happen at before we can get it to the vendor ledger. So all I did was I clicked on these lines, I said activate, it activated it, okay? From there, these three lines down here automatically populated, okay? So because I had those in the transfer, they automatically showed here. On the general journal line, I then was able to transfer it to the vendor ledger. So it's kind of like this, <laughs> it's just like a stop on the train, right? You gotta, gotta do one thing, get it there, and then you gotta move it to another, right? So the vendor ledger. And then what I did was I placed it on that page. So we needed it to be visible, right? So I placed it on the page, I put it after the external document number, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and close this and we're gonna kind of walk through what all that looks like, okay? So starting with the purchase invoice, we're gonna pick our vendor, go ahead and put in a vendor invoice number, and then here's our account number. This is the field that I had added that I had placed on that table. As soon as I go ahead and click one of these, it's automatically gonna populate the store and state code. Those are those transfers that I did as well. The nice thing about having them on the header is when I come down to the lines and I'm keying something in, they automatically come down to the line level as well. Okay, so this is automatic. We're now making things more automated for our users and, and less guessing, things like that, right? Because they don't know um, what account number uh, in store code combination possibly it is. So this is just helping them along the way. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna post that and we're gonna dive then into the ledgers, okay? So if I go to general ledger entries and I just filter based on today's date, okay? 
what it's going to do is it's going to refresh and it's going to give me the examples of what I just did. Okay, so let me kind of get these sorted a little bit of a way that makes sense. Um, so here's the 150 that we just did. Okay, and you can see here in the general ledger entries, we don't have that account number in here. And the reason is because I never placed it on that page. Okay, so to get it on that page on the general journal line, I just need to come back over to the simple object designer and I need to tell it where I want it to be placed. Okay, so it's pretty simple. In this scenario, we didn't want it placed there, so we're just gonna leave it off. But let's go to our vendor list and let's dive into the vendor ledger because this is somewhere where they did want it populated. And you can see here that our account number is now populated here. So this is really gonna help accounts payable when they get statements for like specific stores, you know, specific account numbers. They're going to be able to come in here and they're going to be able to filter and start reconciling that invoice or that statement pretty quickly um, based on this just being here. Now, the next part that I haven't gotten to yet is adding this account number to a check stub. So in this case, they're going to be paying um, NCR Corporation for multiple different account numbers, it's important for them to have that account number also on the check layout. So that will be my next test is how to get that from here onto the check stub. But uh, this is really it. And, and you know, this video, I don't even know how long it is, maybe 10, 11 minutes. Uh, you know, I was playing with this tool for a couple hours getting my feet wet. I'm not a developer by any means. Um, so it was cool to be able to get something like this built without having to actually physically write code because I don't really know how to do that. Um, but uh, what, where I'm going with, with this is, you know, if you have the need for custom fields, if you have the need for custom APIs, things like that, this tool is definitely uh, built specifically for you, right? Um, so go ahead and grab the uh, free trial, play around with it, and hopefully this video helped you. If it did, leave a message in the comment. I'd love to know if it helped you. Thank you, Kristen. That was pretty cool. If you wanna, if you wanna learn more about Kristen, there's a link to uh, Mount Evans Consulting in, in the description below. If you wanna be like Kristen and build awesome solutions like this one, uh, you can also check out the, uh, the link uh, for the Simple Object Designer. Thank you for watching.